Hello, I think I'm recording. Welcome to Creative View Podcast. It's been a few weeks. I'm from Hanover, Pennsylvania. My shop is in McSherrystown, Pennsylvania. And I just want to do the podcast because I think there are so many neat things going on and customers doing neat things. So it's just fun to share. The last time I did a podcast, I had a trunk show here at the shop. And it was the last day before I had to send it back. And I knew if I didn't do it that day that y'all wouldn't get to see it. And my dog had died. And I got pretty emotional. And I forgot to shut off the machine when I was done. I thought I had. So I'm doing much better. But when you're used to having a dog go to work with you day in and day out for almost 11 years and go home with you and have a neat car it's really rough not to have that and you know i get a little chatty at the beginning of my podcast so if you don't like that i might not be for you but i don't want to ever do a podcast where it says this is a yarn this is what i made this is the technique Now, some of you have told me you're having trouble hearing me. I don't have any trouble listening to my own podcast on the iPad. Sometimes I think when you have a phone, you can shut off the microphone and not realize it. But the other thing is I was standing up and then you bend over and you move. I think I need to sit. The other thing, about two podcasts ago, I put my iPad vertically, and when the podcast posted, it had black on the sides, and I just realized I'm doing that right now, so you might get that goofy version with black on the sides. Um, So anyway, I've been thinking about getting another dog, and... I was waiting for my husband, Paul, to say, go ahead, because we've had some arguments in the past over me bringing home dogs, and he, you know, he wasn't into that and whatever, and um, so Sunday, he found me on the bed weeping, saying, I miss my dog, and he's like, Catherine, just go ahead and, and look for a dog. I'm okay. You know, it's like, no matter how many problems you have, and I seem to have a lot. (laughs) Um, I seem to have a lot of things that go wrong. It's that I know God is there for me, but a nice dog just seems to make everything okay. They look at you with those eyes, right? So Sunday, I get on this website called Love of Dogs, and I start crying, because it's like none of these dogs are my girl. And um, I agonize and agonize, and I finally pick out a dog, and then I realize I'm on the website for Ostling, New York. So I'm thinking, okay, how far is that? That's just not feasible. But I said to somebody in the shop today, you know, imagine if your husband died, and you went on a website and you saw... Well, this old boy's had like three different homes now. He has a bum leg and uh, he hopes you can cook and he needs a forever home. And this woman said she knew a dog website that did that and people thought it was a dating website. <laughs> and they, they thought they were men, but I mean, that website I was on, they took you right into the soul of the dog. Like, oh, these eyes are so expressive. They know what you're thinking and showed you videos. And so, um, you know, it's just really, really hard to, you know, to just go through the process. So I put a feeler out and said, you know, I know there are dogs who lose their home because their owner has to go in a nursing home or whatever. I have love, I have empty arms. And so this young woman named Kendra wrote to me and sent me a picture because <laughs> I'm saying a nice sized dog to come back and forth to the yarn shop with me sends me a picture of a mastiff. <laughs> a mastiff. And uh, while I'm even thinking about this, she starts writing back and forth 
saying this dog has been abused. He is terrified. She dropped a cup and he threw himself down a flight of stairs. And she's not going to re-gift him. I don't know if she just wanted me to see him or what. But she went to a puppy mill yesterday and got two Maltese, what I thought were puppies. And my husband said, well, I don't want to get into puppies, but they're actually a year old. And I don't know. And then the lady I was talking to about the whole husband thing, um, she said, you know, there is a, a, a local website for senior dogs. So it's called Senior Tales. It's in Hanover. And I got on that today and there were some really cute dogs and there was an older dog they called Pappy. I, I wouldn't call him Pappy. And uh, I wrote and said, you know, this is my life. Would he love this kind of a life? Could you call me? And I didn't get a call today and I didn't get an answer back. So we'll just take it slow, you know. Um, I just realized the way I'm filming this, it looks like I'm cut off, but that's just the yellow wall up there. Anyway, I don't know how it looks to you. People who podcast tell me that when they get ready to post their podcast, they get their choice of pictures, photos of themselves, what they want to put on um, what the viewer sees. I can't find anything like that. So when I down my podcast, I don't know what I'm going to look like. I could be like that or like that. I mean, I don't know. So I just go with the flow and post upload. And that's kind of the way it is. So back to like rehoming and all that. Years ago, my husband and I did foster care. We put a lot into it. It was 19 months and lots of classes and paperwork extraordinary before we even met a child. And we took him in and he really wasn't ready. And um, one of my patients at the time said, you know, I can't imagine what it would be like to be that child and be so happy, like so over the top to have a home. And I looked at him and I said, it's not like that. I said, this is all based on loss and failure. I said, imagine if your wife didn't want you, you weren't welcome in your home, you weren't taking care of you, and somebody takes you, and you stay here a couple days, there while there, and then you're taken to a home in a neighborhood you're not familiar with, and you're told now, this lady's gonna be your wife, and these people are gonna be your brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles, that would be terrifying. And then not knowing if you're going to get, you know, rejected. So anyway, here I am. I thought I'd show you a few things. Uh, I appreciate every single one of you and all the messages that you sent. And I know a lot of you are going through some really rough times. And um, it's nice to have a, a sisterhood and a network. Uh, because, you know, sometimes you don't know who to talk to. And a lot of people today don't have good listening skills and they really don't, they cut you off or they, they're not really hearing you or they don't want to know. And if you have a good spouse, you can go to them. But, you know, I went through a divorce the first time and I know that things that you've said in confidence can then be put out there and People have diaries, but I've heard of people that died and then the family reads their diaries and, and they're just mortified. And I mean, we tend to put our heartfelt things in those diaries. And I had a friend years ago that they were going through a lot of family trauma and she kept a journal. And she said a year later, she looked back on that journal and it was so ugly. She couldn't, she couldn't stand it. So I guess that's one reason why I love just taking everything to God because I know he already knows exactly how I feel about everything. So I couldn't remember if I showed you this. Um, one of the gals that comes in here, Sandy, she had told me about this in the past and I don't know why, I just wasn't really interested in it. And then I got interested in it. And it was so fun. I could make these like every day, day in and day out. This is a Sandy Melville pattern that can be worn different ways. 
but she said that shawls and things never seem to be right. Uh, you could kind of widen it on your shoulders or in the book. She just kind of shows it like that. But I also like it, you know, just hanging down. And um, But I chose Painted Mist yarn. And I put a strand of um, mohair or angora with it uh, so that it would be warmer because I didn't know if the acrylic yarn would be warm. And this is the book that the pattern came out of. There are some things in this book that I'm, I like. I like the velour scarf and it's chenille and I'm actually making it. And she gives you a special technique that even though it's garter stitch, it looks really fancy. It's a very good book with uh, lots of pictures to show you techniques. And this pattern here, so this is an all knit book, no purling. Know how well you can see that. Actually reminds me of this other pattern I'm doing right now. It's on the Pearl Soho website, and it's called the No Pearl Ribbed Scarf. And it's basically like knit three, hold the yarn to the front, and slip pearl-wise. And I chose the same yarn, but in a different color. And then I decided to marry, um, two yarns together. So I took the Painted Mist and the Queensland Perth, which is a sock yarn. This one is called Alice Springs. And now I'm thinking of all these neat color combinations. I call this marrying two yarns. All the neat color combinations that I could put together, because these scars are addictive. It is really fun. Here's like a purple red. I mean, what do you think? So, when is the last time that you've used two yarns together to get an effect? It really is turning out pretty. And this scarf is reversible. What isn't showing up on the camera are the, the bright reds and they are bright. In fact, my husband said this is Christmassy looking. So then I'm thinking I could do a hat out of the same pattern and I could do fingerless gloves. So what are you all knitting? Are you doing, um, <laughs> there's the phone and no matter what I do, it's gonna click on and you're gonna hear the message and there's not much I can do. So, Oh, that's a like a, a robo call. So I had had a trunk show and one of the yarns was Mirasol Sulka. And these nice little neck warmers are basically just a 10 needle cast on 60 stitches, knit two purl two and two skeins and you're done. This yarn is like knitting with butter. It's extra fine merino, baby alpaca, baby alpaca, and mulberry silk. And I think these will be good Christmas gifts and they're, they're quick. So, I've been teaching some classes and mostly children. And um, I have a child I'm teaching and she just wasn't getting it. And you know, how many weeks do you hang in? And last week, she's just kind of listless and didn't want to do it and hold the yarn. And her mother is paying. And uh, Emma says, yeah, I just wish I could just skip all these steps, steps and just do it. And I said, did you ever go miniature golfing? And you know, you can't get the ball in and your strokes and strokes beyond par and you're just frustrated and you just want to do it. And she said, yeah, that's what I Well, don't we all? So usually somewhere around the third week is when I see it really click in and people come in and they just got the muscle memory and they're just going to town. So much encouraged. She came back this week. She brought her sister. She was teaching her sister and she's just taken off now. 
So that is really good. I wanted to share this little book called Free Range Knitter, 10 Knitting Tragedies from Which There Is Little Return. Number one, puppy, lace, 1300 yards of silk. <laughs> Please don't make me speak of it. <laughs> Number two, moths. We can pretend all we like, but the odds are exceptionally good that moths are like knitters' herpes. Nobody wants to admit they have them, but once you've got them, you have them forever, even if you're just waiting for the next outbreak. You know what we have at my house? We have slugs, and when it rains, they really come out. Now, open the front door, and they're all over the front of our house, and they're mating, and look, you know, but I've heard some horror stories about malls. Um, one of the customers told me that when her mother died, there was a baby grand piano and nobody wanted it. And um, she took it not knowing that there were malls in that piano and they ate away all the pads for the the keys they were eating into her her husband's hunting mounts and his hunting clothes and her shawls and it was thousands of thousands of dollars of damage it's just a terrible story so this is a yarn called fur reel and this is the lilac color and we made this lush blanket with I think an 11 needle and seven yard, seven balls. This is what the yarn looks like. It's 100% polyester. And this color is called um, Jersey Wooly. And it's good for cows and like um, sells for $10. If any of you ever want to order, I don't have a website yet. It's driving me crazy. But you can go on knittingfever.com. You can look at all these things. You can pick out your colors and call me. I would love to hear from you. My phone number is 717-634-2416. And there's a problem right now that when people pull me up on Google, Google then connects them to the Creative View shop in California. And that's not me, I'm in Pennsylvania. So anyway, um, another thing that I've been doing is just called a Noro striped scarf. And it's really one of the funnest things I've ever done. You just take two different balls of Noro. I really should stop because it's getting really long, but I don't want to stop. And um, I'm getting all these amazing color combinations that just really make me happy. And um, I'll tell you this cute little story about my grandson, Tobin. Tobin's five now. He comes over to our house every morning and um, one morning I said, do you want to help me bake brownies? And he said, yes. And of course he likes to try to crack the eggs, but then it's a mess. So he put the eggshell on top of this flat strainer and then the other eggshell and he started smashing the eggshell just gently. And then he said, and he goes, this is so satisfying. I can hardly stand it. <laughs> and that's how I feel doing this. Like, oh, this is so satisfying. I can hardly stand it. It was just so cute. And he says the dearest stuff. And um, he just makes me just really happy. Like uh, yesterday, we were playing this little card game called Trash Pandas. It's a cute game for kids if you want to get it. Uh, the pandas try to get in the trash and everything. And um, so player number one gets three cards. Player number two gets four cards. And player number, yeah, player number three gets five cards. So it's just the two of us playing. He deals me three. He gets five. We pick up our cards. And I say, Tobin, why do you have five cards? And he looks at me and says, 
because I'm player number three. <laughs> so, needless to say, we had a little discussion about cheating and why that's not good. And when I was a kid, and I may have told this story before, but you know, when you're a child, there's certain things that happen in your life that really, really influence you. My dad's parents lived on the same piece of land in a trailer and the house beyond that was my mom's parents and my grandfather beside us would have these little card parties on Friday nights and they played for nickels and dimes and I would be sitting there with my grandmother and she would help me with knitting and so we're all in this very small space and um their kitchen was small and just a small table and men sitting around it would be my two grandfathers and two other guys and to protect the guilty I'm not going to say any names but there was a, a guy that would come most weeks and play cards and one night they were playing and all of a sudden I heard my mom's father say wait a minute and it's like time stopped and everybody was and this man got up, quietly left, and never came back to play cards again. And I'm maybe eight years old, nine, and not, what happened? Well, he would always know what was on the bottom of the deck, and if he liked that card, he would deal it to himself. That taught me a really powerful lesson about cheating. And then when I was a freshman, there was a girl in my class. She had plenty of time to study in the evening, but she wouldn't get her math homework done. And she would kind of like smaltz me and say, hey, I didn't understand this one problem. Can I look at your homework? And she was copying all my homework. And then I get my homework back and the teacher has a message on my homework saying, your answers are the same as Carolyn's so-and-so and i thought i'm getting accused of cheating so i'm not much for cheating yeah i opened a box from um hiya hiya today it's my first time ever to order from them and i thought that you might like to see some of their products i love peacock feathers they have very affordable little bags that look like peacocks that are just beautiful. They have circular needle cases, I'm trying not to rattle this, that are every bit as beautiful. And just a lot of fun stuff. Fun knitting pins, markers, adorable little panda bear things. They have a sheet needle gauge. How cute is that? And of course, I'm thinking ahead to people buying Christmas gifts. Really cute little panda bear toppers. And these would be for the small needles. And they're all knitting socks. And the socks are like in all different colors. They have really pretty shawl pins. So that's the feather. That is the bird on a branch. And they come in different colors like antique, brass. That's the brass, that's the antique. I'm not even sure if um, you can see the difference. I really like the fern. And they have these really cute little scissors. Now these are the cats. I don't know how well you can see that kitty cat they have the octopus and they have the puppy dog and they're just teeny tiny little snips um It is amazing on a podcast when somebody rattles a bag the way it sounds so loud. So there's the little kitty cat. And there they are, just little, little tiny snips. I think they're so cute. And I'm hoping people will really like them. 
And then another thing they have is markers in these little containers. One is cats and one is dogs. So there's the little food dish with the paw print in it. There's the little sit and the back is stay. You know, I was reading that nobody ever taught a dog to know tricks. They already know how to do all those things. So like, suppose that you're the human and somebody says, sit on the couch and you do, yeah, I'll do that for a cookie. There's the little dog. And then there's the, whoops, not showing it very good, the paw print. And then the other kit is for kittens or cats. And so this is the cats. You get the little paw print. You get the little cat. You get the little food dish with the paw print. You get the little paw print. And you get the little kitty cat. I saw a really cute show today. It was, um, animals versus vets who will win and the way some animals carry on when they know they're going to have to go to the vet i had no idea and there was one dog that actually played dead and no matter what she did he you would have thought he was dead and um until she got a treat out and then the other thing they have is the little panda bear tape measures in blue and so they sell for five these sell for 12 um, the shell pin sell for 15 the sheet gauge sells for six so if I can help you out with anything call me and the little panda to um, topper sell for six so the last thing I wanted to do, a new Interweave Knit Magazine came out, and it's actually called Winter 2020, and I just thought I would show you some things. Um, it seems to have good projects in for everybody. So there's a cute little hat. So I think I'd like to make that. They have Ruana, which is a big shawl. And you know, Christmas isn't that far away. I don't know. Um, there's a cow, which looks much more interesting when it's on than it does just sitting there. I think that looks pretty when it's on. And they have sweaters. This one has like stair steps going up the side. And that seems to be what's popular now, the short-waisted sweater. There's a beautiful cable hoodie for men or women. I don't know why that couldn't be unisex. These are mittens with the thumb and a finger. And you know, the first couple times I was by them, I didn't realize that there was an index finger Kind of like a color block sweater. The sweater on the front. And there's a Fair Isle sweater. There is a headband hat with some color work and so forth. Here is the Fair Isle sweater. Here we go. So, anyway, I didn't show you everything, but I kind of give you, I gave you a taste, and it's starting to get dark here. Once it gets dark, it gets dark at five o'clock now. We had the time change. 
I have to turn out all the lights, fumble through the dark building to the back of the store in the dark, and I don't like it, and I don't have my talk anymore. So maybe the next time I podcast, I'll have a furry friend here. And um, just in closing, I wanted to say if you have kids or you have grandkids, it's really fun to do these little science experiments that only take a couple minutes. One that I did recently, you take a hair dryer and a ping pong ball and turn the hair dryer on high power. It doesn't have to be hot, just high power. And your ping pong ball will start bouncing in the air and dancing. Well, then my little grandson gets out a laser gun. And he has to shoot it, but he just squealed with the light. That was so fun for him. Another one we did was called Raisin Raising. Raising Raisins. And you took a small cup of light colored soda, poured it into the top, dropped in a handful of raisins, and they sink to the bottom, but then the carbon dioxide bubbles start raising them to the top, and they start going up and down and up and down. That was really, really fun. My little grandson used to say, oh, do we have to do another science experiment? Now he says, can we do a science experiment? So the one we're going to do tomorrow is you go in a dark closet with a flashlight and a mirror and you bite into a wintergreen mint. And supposedly there's some kind of electrical charge that takes place. So you need to be able to look in your mouth. That's what we're gonna do tomorrow. So the winner of the giveaway yarn from last time was Sandy Stuck. So send me a message and the yarn giveaway for the next time is who asked go Aaron and just answer the question. Have, have you ever like married two yarns together, used the yarn as a carry along? And, um, do you think you might do it again soon or just anything pertaining to that? I'm just interested to see, and you have to be a subscriber so I can see you. And the Who Asked Go Erin, this color, that will be the giveaway for the next time. And I'd like to thank you very much for spending some time with me. And um, keep your chinny chin chin up there. And uh, keep smiling. And God loves you. Take care. Good night.